All right, so here we go. Our bob with square layers. We'll call this technique DE. So I'll begin in the back by cutting in my square bob. So when I say square bob, I mean the entire length is even. Yeah, it's not an A line or it's not asymmetric, it's square. So it just means like a one, I'm sorry, it just means a zero degree square line. So here I'll get into um, key tips that'll help you to cut your bobs with more excellence. First of all, you have to understand that cutting a zero degree line, in my opinion, is probably one of the most hardest techniques to nail when you really understand that a zero degree line is like almost impossible to cut. There's all, there will always be some errors and deviations. But nonetheless, with air deviations or mistakes, a perfect bob just has less mistakes. You will all, if, every time I cut a bob, I improve a little bit. I've, till this day, like 22 years in the game, I have yet to cut a perfect bob. I just cut bobs that have less errors than other people. And with this mindset that I use, um, humble and understanding that I'm not perfect, it actually allows me to grow and not become arrogant because no one likes an arrogant hairdresser. Okay, so now let's get into the key points to nailing a square bob. Okay, one important element, you have to comb the hair to natural fall, which is actually challenging. So your comb, doing your haircut is always in your hand. So your comb can assist you, it can help you out. It, it's, its function goes beyond just combing hair. But when I comb the hair to natural fall, then I actually go back and I visually line up the teeth of my combs to that section from roots to my guideline. And when all that hair is perfectly parallel to the teeth of my comb, then I know that I'm actually at natural fall. So that's a really cute and awesome secret that very few people even talk, talk about. Okay, the next, you have to, when you're cutting in the line, I'll, I can, since I'm doing a zero degree, a square line, my, the, actually the shape of my comb is also a zero degree square line. So I like to use my comb to first line up my length and then I'll start cutting on my comb, or at least use my comb to help me get that balance in that shape. And again here, as we're moving from the sides into the front, make sure you approach the hair around the ears with little to zero tension. Okay, and make sure your eyes are exactly in front of what you're cutting. Like, only in this position are you able to see these important details. If you can't see the details, you can't calculate and make adaptations towards what you're actually creating. So make sure your eyes are exactly in front of what you're cutting. And also here, when you're cutting in a square line, watch the very tips of your shears. When the, if the tips of your shears are a bit slanted, then you know what the rest of the line that you're cutting is slanted and uneven. You have to ensure that the tips of your shears are always square, which is very challenging. But if your guideline square and just line up your section, you should be okay. And another key point is your body position. When cutting in the square line, it's always it's the most intelligent choice to line up your center of balance, like your your chest, directly in front of what you're cutting. Okay, so here I'll start layering the back. I'll be cutting square layers into the back. So begin this technique, middle section. Take the hair from the top of the occipital bone to the crown, comb it straight out, and from there cut in your layers. Yeah, so I'm cutting in a 90 degree shape. Make sure you comb the hair super smooth from roots to your guideline. Stand directly in front of your section and just comb this section out to your center of, so your center of balance. So that's the best way to control. Now with the following section, I'm going to begin to elevate each section progressively higher. So by increasing my elevation with each section, it allows me to compensate for the roundness of the hair. So you have to look at like, say the, the first, our guideline, our guideline, the actual length that we took a measuring from like guideline to the scalp is closer than the second or third section. So to balance for that, that roundness in the head, we have to begin to elevate our sections slightly. The amount of elevation, that's, that's what you have to calculate in the salon because every client's head shape is a little bit different. And also you have to make sure that the contours, the roundness of the head is symmetrical on both sides. You may have one side that's a bit more round, the other side a bit more square. So you have to adjust your technique. Okay, so always working in clean, manageable sections. I comb the hair straight out, Increasing my elevation, again, to compensate for the roundness of the head. 
and I'm just checking in my lengths. So remember, my guideline, I cut the hair from the occipital bone, the highest point of the occipital bone's protrusion to right at the center crown area. So the final section here, I'm elevating a bit more. Most of my shape's dropping out, so I just dust it into place, comb the hair to natural fall, make a visual assessment. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here I have to approach the opposite side in the ex exact same manner. So remember, clean, manageable sections. Careful of your body position. Comb the hair straight out. And with your second section, remember I elevate this section slightly higher than my guideline to allow for the roundness of the head. And you can hear through the back, I'm cutting in a 90 degree shape. I'm cutting in layers, yeah? Okay, so here we're working the exact same manner. So it's always to remember, like the exact same technique I did on the right, and I have to calculate, like I have to make sure that my elevation over direction is consistent. So here I'm cutting on the outside of my fingers. You can approach it two ways. Um, if I were cutting on the inside of my fingers, I'd actually be standing directly in front of what I'm cutting. But for the shooting this video sake, um, it's easier for you to actually see the over direction elevation at this angle. So I decided to approach the back portion of this haircut, cutting on the outside of my fingers. It can be produced in both ways, but the difference is I feel, I know 100% that when I'm cutting on the inside of my fingers, it's a bit more challenging. There are a lot more details to calculate and the end result when you cut on the inside of your fingers, it's more excellent. I find when I'm cutting on the outside of my fingers, my margin of error increases dramatically just because um, the natural tendency to over direct the hair, over directing the hair off, I'll, I'll have more of a tendency to make a lot more mistakes. So I personally prefer cutting on the inside of my fingers, but it can be executed both. Taking this awareness into fact, when you're at the salon, you can also just flip the chair around, line up the head with the mirror, and then use the mirror for your balance, and that should compensate for cutting on the outside of your fingers. Okay, so now we're approaching the top portion of the hair. So here, I take the hair from the back, and at the crown, I comb the hair straight up, and then here, I'm cutting in a graduated shape. Okay, and the technique that I'll be using through the top portion of this haircut is every single section hereafter will be over-directed back onto my very first section, onto the guideline. So this way, I'm building up length, I'm building up weight. And I'm also cutting in some graduation through the top area. So work in clean, manageable sections and always make sure you incorporate the sides. Okay, so next section, again, is slightly diagonal. I always work in manageable sections. Watch your show count. Combing the hair exactly onto my original guideline through the top. So I'm over directing the hair slightly back, which will give me additional length. And I'm starting to build up my weight. Checking in the side areas. Okay, so again, when you're working with super, super thick hair, you don't have to go in and over texturize the hair. That's a cop out. You're just busting up your shape and you can sneak a lot of like bad geometry out the door for the initial week or two. Like with a good, you can give a bad haircut and over texturize it and give your client a nice blow dry and you cheek it out the door. And the client kind of realizes, she thinks, oh wow, what an awesome haircut. But then you have to anticipate once a client goes home and takes a shower, the shape is never the same again. So it's not advisable to go in and over texturize the hair because anybody can do that. My favorite type of hair to cut is super thick hair, like Asian hair is super thick because again, it's, more, it's much more challenging. What I found over the past two decades plus of cutting hair is that when you comb the hair properly, like seriously, from the roots to the ends, and your shape has less mistakes in it, it doesn't really matter the density or the thickness of the hair. It's all about the quality of your shape. So I would never recommend just blowing through a thick haircut over a texturizing again and just like getting to look with product. I'd rather always go in and technically nail that shape because this nailing the shape technically is much more challenging 
And that's what actually our clients pay us to do. Okay, again, through the opposite side on the top, um, over directing the hair to 100% the exact same elevation as my guideline. So over direct the hair back, following my guide. Make sure you comb the hair super clean from roots to the ends. Work in slightly diagonal sections. Again, over directing the hair back onto my initial guideline. So here, the longest length will be through the front. The shortest length will be that first guideline through the back. So here I'm building up length, I'm building up weight, and I'm cutting in as the hair falls naturally. I'm cutting in a slight A-line, graduated shape through the top. Okay, and now for the finish, I'm just flat wrapping the hair. I start off this entire blow dry, I'll use two, three techniques, I'm sorry. I'll flat wrap, I'll be leafing the hair, and I'll be beveling it under. I'm not going for too much artificial proof here. In this case, I'm not using a, brow, a round brush. I could get the hair super straight and without too much artificial proof at the root with a round brush, but for this demonstration, I'm going in with a paddle brush and I'm just blowing out the hair smooth from roots to the ends. When I say smooth, I have to make sure again that cuticle is nailed shut. And blow drying hair is probably the most exhausting. It's more to me, it's more exhausting than cutting it. So when I dry the hair, I don't like using my hands too much. I don't like making, I like to minimize my movements with my hands and arms. I actually move my hips, my knees, and my shoulders. So I'm actually using less effort to get the same exact results. So I can save my energy for after the blow dry to go back and nail this haircut. A lot of people, they over, it's like they're doing a ballet with the blow dry, but then you're just wasting a lot of time and energy. So we have to conserve our energy because our energy is where our power comes from. Okay, so here I'm just going back, I'm polishing on one length. So you have to understand that the hair always, always, 100% of the time, no matter what, this hair will always lie different, wet and dry. So it really doesn't matter how perfect the shape looks when it's technically cut wet. Once you're dry, you must, I repeat, you must go back and refine that line. Okay, so here I'll just go back and I'm just texturizing into my shape. I'll do a visual cross check. If I see any odd way, I'll just knock it off. And I just, here I'm just pointing into my shape. I'm not, again, removing length, I'm removing heaviness. I want the hair's density to be consistent. I, it, I must be able to comb the hair comfortably from roots to ends. That's the standard, that's the indicator that tells me, okay, I've textured enough and the density is consistent. Now, when you're texturizing the hair, again, always keep the density in mind. And as I texturize the hair and go through it, I like to approach it similar to the same way that I technically cut it, the way it was cut when it was wet. So that way I can pull the shape out, I can visually cross check. If I see any weight, I can just knock it off in the cross check and then immediately flip back to my texturizing. So that way I'm actually doing two processes at the same time. So you, you kind of streamline your technique. I'm just going in, I'm going to refine and because her fringe was a bit off, so I'm just, I'm not really cutting it shorter. I'm just cleaning up that line, cutting in a proper fringe, and I'll go back and texturize it. Okay, so there we have it, our square bob with square layers. Enjoy.